factoring bases itself off of foil. It's kind of doing foil backwards. So again, just talking up here at the top about foil and how it's first, outer, inner, last. And I'd kind of like to turn everything into something that's kind of fun. So when I'm doing this, I'll always do my first. And no, you don't have to draw in the lines and stuff like that. But for my purposes here, to try and put a little humor in things, I always say if you foil things out correctly, you get the little guy with the smiley face smiling at you. So that way you make sure you've hit everything. And then we just combine our like terms in the middle. And again, a lot of you can do this in your head and that's fine. I don't have an issue with that. The one thing I do tell people to be cautious of though is when they get a squared term. Because a lot of times I'll get this back in and if it's on a quiz or something I'll see x squared plus 25. And I'm like, oh, we're close. But just remember when you're in that situation you have two of these actually, and so you'd actually foil that out. And when you do, it's true, I still get the x squared as my first term. And it's true, I still get the 25 at the end, but my outer and my inner, my 5x and my 5x, which gives me 10, can kind of get lost in the shuffle. So again, it's one of those things where you just want to be careful with some of the detail to make sure things are going okay. So how does this work into factoring? Well, there's a couple of different things. There's some special cases, but basically most of what we're going to deal with is, is there a coefficient in front of the x or is there? If there's not, okay, this is more like what that half sheet was that some of you have gotten hold of for the extra credit. And basically what we're looking at, some of you may have dealt with diamonds before. So if you have, if you haven't, you can kind of get a quick preview here again, and if not, that's okay. But we're looking for two numbers that multiply to make our number on the top and add to make our number on the bottom. And you're like, well, what are these numbers you speak of? Well, when we're looking at a trinomial, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to get the number on the end and add to get the number in the middle. So I need two numbers that multiply to negative 28 but the same two I have to add to negative 12. Now, I'd assume that most of you in here have gotten here because you're pretty good with quick thought on your multiplication tables, at least I hope so. The best way to go with these is always to think about the multiply number and just start thinking of every pair of numbers you can that would multiply to 28 until we can find a pair that'll add up to this. So just off the top of your head, what are two numbers that multiply to 28? Okay, 7 and 4. So then I look, are 7 and 4 going to add up to 12? No, crap. It's not 7 and 4. Wow, I don't think of any other ones. Negative 14 and Oh, he's even thinking of the, the negative and positive. I love this. 14 and 2 is 28. And you're like, you know what? With the signs that are involved here, so if I have a 14 and a 2, right, I know one of them's got to be negative. Because, well, if two numbers multiply to negative 28, one's positive and one's negative. Well, how do I know? Well, when I add them, it has to be negative, so the bigger number has to be negative. Nicely played. Nicely done. And if I'm ever not sure, I can always foil it back out and see how it works. But that's what I mean when we talk about guess and check, guess and revise when you're doing this. You may write it out and then erase it, or you may do it mentally. But again, I'm just going to play a little. So whatever variable I have goes first. And again, I want to multiply to get the number on the end. Not a lot of choices this time. Add to get the number in the middle. Multiply to 4 and add to 5. 4 and 1. 4 times 1 is 4. 4x plus 1x is 5x. Good to go. And if you need something more visual, putting them into the diamond, like putting it 4 and 5, and then being able to physically see 1 times 4 is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, that's fine. Okay, I don't care. All right. <coughs> A couple of things, bless you. A couple of things to mention here. I notice right away, because sometimes the signs can give me hints on some of this, 
Well, since I see everything's positive, I know these are both going to be plus. That's one thing. So multiply to 14 and add to 9. 7 and 2. Seven and two. Uh, let's get a little bigger of a number working here. Hmm. Multiply to negative 80 and add to 2. Ooh. Now, if you're not thinking of 80 a lot of the time, this may be one. Maybe you have to go to the calculator. Maybe you're, oh, maybe. Nice, okay. Because, right, I'm thinking, okay, 10 times 8 is 80, and they're two apart. This seems to work well. And again, just think about the clues that are here. Negative means one's going to be positive and one's going to be negative. The plus in the middle means the bigger number is going to be positive. And I can use those clues to kind of help me out. So there is some, it's true, there is some guess and check to this, but some of it's just a strategy of figuring out signs and how they can keep you out of trouble. Now, unfortunately, they aren't going to be able to go quite this quick because not every problem we do is just going to have x squared with a coefficient of 1. Some of them we're going to start having values in front of. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to tackle these. Some, if you can just run all these numbers through your head. And another one where you can get to the right answer each time, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So let's kind of see how this goes, because you're looking here going, okay, here's where i got to take more into consideration this time. Now, since this isn't just x, i got to figure out numbers that multiply to 3. Well, that's not hard, because there's only one choice, 3 and 1. But now I've got to take that into consideration I still want two numbers that multiply to 10, but now I've got to take this 3 into consideration. It's got one. Uh, you can use negative 5 and negative 2. Okay. I know for sure that they're both negative. Well, how do you know that? Because if this is plus 10, they either have to both be positive or both negative. Positive times positive is positive, so it's negative times negative. But when I look to the middle, I see that's a negative. So I know it's negative, and I'm with you. So 5 and 2. Now, the only other trick is, I've got to make sure I put them in the right place. You're like, what? Because, let's just say, I want this route first. But then when I FOIL, be careful, negative 6 and negative 5. Well, that doesn't add up to 17. Wait a minute. Could I have an eraser? What if I switch them? Negative 15, negative 2 is negative 17. Okay, that works a lot better. And for some of you, those are going to snap off like nothing. You're going to be like, oh, okay, this is not bad. I'm guessing checking a little bit. Might have to erase a couple of times, no big deal. And that's the biggest thing with these. It's okay if you don't get it right the first time. You may have to do some erasing. My first term again, the 2, I don't have to think much. Gal, three I don't have to think much either. The only thing I gotta figure out is where's the three go? Is it three and one or one and three? One and three. Because again, it's basically to test the middle, you're doing the inner and outer of foil, the oi. One X and six X gets me seven X. So that one works out okay. Now, here's where life gets a little more complicated. Because you're like, well, it could be, you're like always oh, going nuts. It could be 8 and 1, but it could be 4 and 2. Hmm. And then 9, well, that could be 9 and 1. Well, it could be 3 and 3. And again, this is one of those that we just got to keep playing a little bit. So if we have to, we go, okay, let's see. Let's kind of start looking and seeing if something makes sense. Anybody got something they want to try out here? We all got a shot. Yes, sir. 2x plus 3 times 4x plus 3. All right, let's check this out. 6x, 12x, 18x. Winner, winner. All right. Didn't need the other one. That's okay. But again, just keep playing. Now, this last guy is a doozy. Because, whew, there's options galore here. For 18, I could have 18 and 1. I could have 2 and 9. I could have 3 and 6. 
my goodness, 14. I could have 14 and 1. I could have 7 and 2. How do you keep all this stuff straight? Well, oh, I didn't get myself room. Again, it's kind of one of those things where I can just start playing around a little bit. So I might say, like, let's see, I'd have 18 and 14. Now that's not going to work. 63, yeah, that's not going to work. 6 and 42, probably not so much. 21 and 12, wait a minute. 21 and 12. I got one positive and one negative, because I know that, because they multiply to a negative 14. Hmm, this might work. Okay, so I've got three, three and six for my x's here. Now I gotta play with the two and the seven. Let's see here, two and seven. Negative 21, positive 12. No, that's negative, that's not gonna work. Let's see. Can I put the plus and minus in already? Well, maybe not, because if I think about what I just did for a minute, this is why I should have used pencil there as well. Pen and factoring, never a good idea. If I would have gone with my seven and my two, 21 and 12, I want the 21 to be positive because of my plus in the middle. So, there's my plus. Okay, let's make sure this works. Negative 12, positive 21 works. Negative times positive, good. So sometimes it is. You may have to make yourself a separate little list. I've been known to do this. It didn't fit in quite there as well as I would like it to. But sometimes I've been known to have a piece of scratch paper on the side, and I will. I'll just sit there, and I will break down, once I get a pen that works, I'll just break down the possible number combinations for my first value and for my second and just start doing the foiling stuff until I find a pair that I can wiggle around to make it work. And that is, that's basically what we're going to come down to with those, what we're going to have to get good at, especially with the numbers that get a little bit bigger. Okay? But this is as bad as it gets. The rest of them, not too shabby compared to those. Sometimes, and I always say to check for this first, see if they have a common factor. Okay, if they have anything in common, it doesn't mean I get rid of it. Like I can divide each of these by four, and I can take a T out of each one. And then whatever's left, this is what goes in the parentheses. So what would I multiply 4T by to get to 8T squared? 2T. 2T. And then 4t to get to negative 4t is minus 1, and that one I'm done because I can't factor anything else. Now, it may only be one step like that sometimes. Sometimes, not quite so much. I look at the next one. Number 11, what do those have in common? 3. Take out the 3. And then when I go through to put the rest of it in here, I got x squared. 3 times 2 is 6, and 3 times negative 8 would be negative 24, but this time I'm not quite done, and that's what I've got to be cautious of. Because this looks kind of like those first problems we were doing up at the top. Is there a way, and I might not be able to, maybe I can, maybe I can't. Multiply to get negative 8, same two numbers add to get positive 2. Positive 4 and negative 2. Negative 8, 4 minus 2 is 2. Now we're factored. Now some of you may say, well, could I have just done this with some guess and check and maybe I get like 3x plus 12 and x minus 2. Is that okay? If we're trying to solve, yeah, you could get away with that. But that's kind of the same concept. I compare it to fractions. If you put your answer as 2 sixths and 1 third is actually the answer, it's one of those things. Like on a quiz, I want it this way. So 
It's just something you want to get in the habit of. And then here's our last little combo. Okay, I can get a five. And then you look at that, and some of you may say, okay, that looks done. But if you take a peek right below there, if you haven't dealt with square differences of squares before, well, here's a new thing for you. Because what I can actually do with this, since those are both perfect squares, I square x to get x squared. I square 2 to get 4. And since I want it to be a minus 4, I do one of each. And any time you get two perfect squares that are together like that, and it's a difference, there's no such thing as a sum of squares, I can break it down that way, and here's why. Because when I went to FOIL, okay, I'd have A squared, but then when I did my outer and my inner, positive AB and negative AB cancel. And that's what I end up with at the end. So I just look at, I call them shorties. The two factor ones typically are going to be something with perfect squares or cubes. And again, I just look, what do I square to get each one? And one gets a plus and one gets a minus. Doesn't matter the order. If that's minus and that's plus, same deal. So what's that last one going to look like? How's, what's this going to look like? What do you square to get 20? Oh, he's got it. 5m minus 2m times 5m plus 2 Nicely done, OK? I square 5 to get 25 and m to get m squared. I square 2 to get 4 and n to get n squared, and it's still plus minus. So just because they throw an extra variable in there doesn't, nothing bad, OK? Nothing terrible with that. And then the last thing I want to hit up with you for today, and we'll finish up some of this tomorrow, but you'll be able to get a really good start on this sheet. Perfect square trinomials. Now, some of you may look at that and go, well, this looks just like up above. I'm multiplying to 36 and I'm adding to 12. Well, if I'm multiplying to 36 and adding to 12, that's just 6 and 6. So why wouldn't I just do this? Why is there some fancy formula for it? You don't have to have a fancy formula for it. Okay? These are equivalent. If you want to look at it like multiply to this and add to this, that's fine. But typically what happens is if your final number is a perfect square, you can use that to form this and make it go faster. And here's how. What do I square to get x squared? x. What do I square to get 16? 4. What's the sign in the middle? I didn't mention that on the first one. Because that tells me what goes in the middle, and I've got it. And again, if you look at it and you just see, well, what do I multiply to get 16 and add to negative 8? It's negative 4 and negative 4. That's okay. Okay, I'm not going to have any problem with that at all. It's just nice on some of these because it will make it go faster sometimes. And we'll talk about that a little more at the start of class tomorrow. So here's what I want you to get onto, though. The other sheet that you picked up today these are some of the longer ones because this is where your mental math is really going to get a test. But the nice thing is you've got some answers down at the bottom of the page to kind of check and see how it's going to make sure it's going okay. And then the same thing is going on on the other side. But I want to say one thing about the other side once I see here for a minute. I'm going to warn you on this side, some of the answers you get will not match the bottom because they weren't good and factored out a number if it had it in common. Like, see, they were naughty. Like number four, you can factor a four out of there before you even factor it. They didn't do that in their answer at the bottom. So shame on them. We won't do that, though. So just something to be cautious of. But we'll be spending some more time with this tomorrow. So do get a start because otherwise you tend to forget these things. And we'll pick it up from there.